partial derivatives still really have essentially the same meaning that derivatives did when we were dealing with derivatives of functions with one independent variable. A partial derivative, when we calculate it, is still a function that gives us the rate of change of that function for any given point, or in this case, a pair of points x, y. So once we have partial derivatives, the next thing we want to look at is evaluating that partial derivative for some specific point at some specific point x, y. So in example 9, we want to find f sub x, the derivative with respect to x, and then we want to evaluate that at x equals 7, y equals 1. So our derivative function will be taking the derivative of 9x squared with respect to x, minus y with respect to x, minus 6y cubed with respect to x. So in this case, we'll get 18x minus the derivative of y will become 0, minus 6y cubed. Then what we'll do is take that derivative function and evaluate it at x equals 7, y equals 1, which will give us 18 times 7, minus 6 times 1 cubed, or 120. So this gives us the rate of change still for our function, but it's specifically going to be the rate of change for our function if we increase x by 1. So what this is saying is that if our x variable, our x value were to increase by 1, our function value would increase by 120. Since we're taking the derivative with respect to x, it doesn't mean anything about increasing our y value. But if we took the derivative with respect to y, that would mean increasing our y value results in some change. So in this case, we're differentiating with respect to x. So if our x value increased by 1, our function value should increase by 120, meaning it's increasing at that point. In the next example, we want to find f sub y. In this case, the only portion that has a y is the e to the y. So our derivative will be 7x, since that's a constant multiple. And then the derivative of e to the y is e to the y. So our derivative function is 7x e to the y. And then we want to evaluate that at f sub y. We want to evaluate f sub y at x equals 9, y equals 0. So we'll get 7 times 9 times e to the 0. e to the 0 is just 1, so we get 63. So here, if we were to increase our y coordinate by 1, our function value will increase by approximately 63. In example 11, now we want to look at the same idea, but with second derivatives. So if we want f sub x, x, the first thing we need is f sub x, the first derivative with respect to x, which will be 14x plus 7y minus 4y squared becomes 0 plus 6 minus 6y becomes 0 and minus 2 becomes 0. So then we'll take the second derivative with respect to x, which gives us 14. So to evaluate f sub x, x at x equals 6, y equals negative 9, we look at evaluating this function for x equals 6, y equals negative 9. There are no variables to substitute into. So actually, regardless of what x and y coordinates we have, the value of our second derivative will always be exactly 14. In our last example, we want to find f sub y sub y. In this case, again, the same function we were looking at in example 11, except instead of taking both partial derivatives with respect to x, we'll take both with respect to y. So this will become 0 plus 7x minus 8y minus 6 
then we'll take the derivative with respect to y to get negative 8. And again, it doesn't matter what x, y pair we consider, since there's no variable here, the second partial derivative will always give us negative 8. But again, notice we get two different values depending on which variables we differentiate with respect to. Here, x and then x gave us a rate of change of 14. Here, differentiating with respect to y and then y gives us a rate of change of negative 8. So again, when we deal with these partial derivatives, make sure you're always paying attention to the order for those partial derivatives because we end up with different results and also paying attention to which variable you should be differentiating with respect to at each step.